people have to have faith in you. They've got to have faith in your business, your product. They have to have faith in you in general. And that requires you to be up top notch and on point. Be organized with your business. Be integral. Be ethical. If you say you're going to be somewhere, be there on time or early. That's how you build trust with your customers. Welcome back to the Beauty Boss Millionaire Podcast with daily on-the-go episodes packed with testimonies and business tips to help you create financial freedom through entrepreneurship. Hosted by the owner of Fricassi Lashes and the Blow Dry Lounge, the Beauty Boss Millionaire herself, Felicia Fricassi. Welcome back to Beauty Boss Millionaire. I'm your host, Felicia Fricassi. And the objective of today's episode is to really get into detail about how trust is so important in a business. Earlier, we've talked about teamwork and collaborations, but trust is so important because if you don't have trust, you're not going to be doing any type of teamwork and you're not going to be able to even collaborate. The definition of trust is a firm belief in the reliability, truth, or the off the strength of someone or something. As someone that I trust around me says that they're going to do something, then I typically believe that they will until they prove me wrong. But I already have systems in place in case they do prove me wrong, I still can operate without them. That's the part of the boss in me that is always a few steps ahead of the other person. Let's first down, let's break down the trust between you and your team. Now, you got to know any millionaire has a team. I'm telling you right now, this is not a solo operation. We've talked about this earlier. So if you do not have trust or if your gut tells you not to trust someone, go with your gut one and two you have to have a team that you trust you have to have a person like for example each manager that works at one of my stores in any of my operations I have a high level of trust I mean when I interview them I'm looking them up and down I'm looking at their op I'm observing how they run things I'm looking at to see if they're on time they're early like extra early those are the ones that I love Those are the managers that I always end up promoting and they end up staying with the company for years and years because they take their job seriously. They have so much belief in me that they're there before me or we're arriving at the same time. And I always arrive anywhere from 30 minutes to 45 minutes early before the day starts just to set up because my job as a business owner is to be ahead of them. And I, when I see someone up at my pace, it makes me happy because I know that they entrust in me and I can trust them. And I can always tell when someone starts slacking in the operation because I start to see that they start to care less and less. And that's when I typically am proactive. I don't wait till something happens. And I pull them aside and say, hey, you know, is everything okay? You know, you used to be here, you know, before me or right around the same time as me or at least early for your shift. Now you're coming in here running. Is everything okay? Because sometimes, you know, I work with women. Sometimes we have things that happen, you know. Sometimes it's their time of the month. You know, I'm just being honest. These are the things that I have to factor in running a female run oriented business. It's funny that I talk like this, but it is honest to God, the truth. There's so, you know, we have kids, there's people that have other things going on. I had a, 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 one of my receptionists, she actually was going through a domestic violence situation. And I, my heart just like shattered when I found out what was going on because she actually didn't have any of the signs. She was still getting beat up at home and coming to work and was on time. But at night she would go home and she was being tortured. And I remember it like it was yesterday. She came into the store. She was there early. I'm saying hi, I'm my chippery. Have a coffee for her, a coffee for me. And she was just like holding something back and she didn't want to tell me. Because most people are embarrassed when they're in these situations. No one wants to straight up say, I'm in an abusive relationship. They're embarrassed. You know, they're embarrassed that they're even subjecting themselves to this and that they're they're not strong enough to get out. They feel embarrassed. So she started explaining to me what was going on and she took off her scarf that was around her neck for the past two days and there was this huge gash of where he had violently, I don't know if he bit her or scratched her, but it was really bad. Like it was so bad where I said, oh my God, you know, I'm so sorry you're going through this. You know, so it's sometimes important as a leader to have a little compassion. You know, like I said, if it's someone that doesn't, show any of the symptoms of a bad employee, have a little compassion. You know, we have sick days, personal days, but still, sometimes you have to find out what's going on with your team. It's only the right thing to do. You know, everyone's not a robot all the time. And if you have that mentality that someone is a robot, you need to probably not be an entrepreneur because you have to be flexible. You gotta, you gotta be suave with this. You gotta, you gotta be smooth as a business owner. You can't always just expect people to perform perfectly. And I think that there needs to be a conversation about this because on your team, you also don't want the person that's always making every single excuse. Their tires flat one day. They have to go to a funeral. Those are the number one excuses I hear. Funeral, someone dies, um, flat tire, 
Someone's in the hospital. Um, and it's to the point where I don't want to have to ask for a note. You know, it's so stupid that we have to do this. But when someone does it more than like three or four times in, in a certain amount of time, I kind of need documentation after that because you're running out thin ice with me at that point. I don't want that. And I don't feel like I can trust you, which is what this conversation is really all about. That trust needs to be there if you're going to have a solid team. So make sure you pick the people to be on your team wisely. And I hope this goes the same for your friends. I pick wisely who I choose to be my, you know, to be my friends because I don't deal with drama and I want to be able to trust you and not you doing something crazy behind my back, you know, in, in life. You, you're never going to have those best friends. If, if you think you got a best friend, let me tell you something. You haven't lived long enough yet because unfortunately your best friend may have another best friend and that's just a, a zone for drama and gossiping. But like I said, you have to have a level of trust when it comes to your team. And another thing is that you actually have to be trustworthy yourself. And what I mean by that is I see some leaders that are unethical, they're unintegral, and they don't, they lie about everything. They're not on time when they say they're supposed to be on time. They're manipulative. They're doing everything but what they should be doing to make their team trust them. And they wonder why their team is so discombobulated. I mean, and I'm talking about your team should trust you so much. If you say you're going to do something, you have to do it. I mean, stop right there, write a note to yourself. You got to be organized if you want to be a business owner. And that goes with, you know, so many other things. You have to be organized. You have to be on time. People always ask me, why don't I really drink or smoke and all this crazy stuff? Because I need to be on point at all times. You slip up, you have a drink, you're getting drunk. Now you got to throw up. Now you got to deal with the hangover. And now it's the morning and now you have to figure out how to function and run your company. I don't do those things. This is why I've been highly successful. My partying and my enjoyment is building companies, making money, and I mean, making a lot of money. I, I really just hate to say it like that, but my joy is really being able to help others to get to a level where they want to be at. I enjoy that. What's the point of making it to the top and you don't have no one to even talk to about it? They can't even relate to you. I'm going to talk a little bit more uh, about something else uh, concerning a, another business that I opened up over the weekend. But first, I want to get back to this trust thing. So you have to be able to trust your team, one. And two, your team has to be able to trust you. And three, your customers have to be able to trust you. And this is where it's about to get real right here. Because some entrepreneurs have a very, very big problem. And I see it all the time. And it drives me nuts because it's the, it's the downfall of their business and they don't even see it. So many entrepreneurs do not run their business in a professional manner. They're running it with friends hanging out, family like it's a hangout shop. Or they're not on time. They're late. They're inconsistent. I've wanted to support so many different ethnic businesses. They're not open on time. They're running behind. They don't have the supplies that they need. And, you know, I kind of work with people sometimes. I'm not going to judge them because, you know, sometimes things do happen. And me, because I'm, I am aware of how our culture has ran because of our don't let me have to go deep back from years and years ago. We're just now catching up to things. And I shouldn't say that because not all of us are like that. But I do have room for understanding for some entrepreneurs that may still have some financial difficulties or, you know, their car broke down. They're still trying to make it out. And I have so much compassion on people like this. But there comes a time where you just want to do business like normal and not have to be waiting around for this to get done or that to get done. And you're sitting in your car waiting or, you know, the person says they're going to be there or they want to deposit. All these weird things because they haven't really been taught how to run a business. Or you have to deal with the attitude. When you get to their business, and I'm not sure why all this happens. I'm not sure where this comes from. I, I know where it comes from, but I'm not really willing to want to accept that as an answer because we're taking it up a level. You know, we're, we're not supposed to be still operating like we're in the 20s running around. This is 2021. We're in the future. You know, we're in the Jetsons era where we should be on point. Everybody should be knowing what to do, how to run a business at this point, you know, and the trust has to be there. Your customers need to say, look, if I go to the place of your business, I expect you to be there. If I pay something, I expect you to be to have it. I shouldn't be having to be in a hood, trying to uh, stake out where you at, going to the place, asking you questions, inboxing you, all these different things that business owners do. And they don't be organized with your business. Be integral. Be ethical. If you say you're going to be somewhere, be there on time or early. That's how you build trust with your customers. If you have an event, keep that event date. 
everyone knows me. If I, I'm one of those people where you'll ask me, can we do something? You may literally not get an answer out of me right away because I'm one of those people that I just say, so you know what? Let me just check. Let me make sure where this is going to work because I don't want to tell you yes and not be a woman of my word. I'd rather be, I used to be like, okay. And then I, you know, when I was younger and I'd be like, oh shoot, I can't do it. And I would tell that person. But nowadays, because my schedule is so limited, I literally check and make sure that date is clear for me to be able to commit to you totally. And that's how it is with anything that I do because I have to walk with a level of integrity. I have to walk with a level of trust with my team. People have to have faith in you. They've got to have faith in your business, your product. They have to have faith in you in general. And that requires you to be up top notch and on point, saving phone numbers, right? Saving emails. I cannot stand when I go to look in someone's phone and they don't have none of the contacts saved. How are you going to get a hold of the person? I get on my husband's case about that all the time. Thank God. It's only like one out of every 15 people that he doesn't save the contacts. Like he didn't, didn't even have our nanny's phone number and I'm thinking what if there's an emergency how are you going to be able to contact her he's like oh I'll search through the numbers I'm like babe no like I save her number now and you know he saved the number these are the things that you need to be on point save every contact with emails make sure you're showing up on time make sure your team trusts you and your team needs to be able to you need to be able to trust your team so I hope all this has helped up next we're going to get into the consequences of broken trust in a business it's the death trap. Up next, I'm Beauty Boss Millionaire. That's it for today. Tune in tomorrow for the Beauty Boss Millionaire podcast. And don't forget to follow the Beauty Boss Millionaire, Felicia Fricasi, on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Beauty Boss Millionaire. For exclusive content on how to make millions in your business, go to beautybossmillionaire.com and click on Become a Patron to gain access to patron-only episodes, Beauty Boss Millionaire t-shirts, and a private Facebook group with live streams with me, Felicia Fricasi.